I'm Paul Clay. I am a video artist, which means that all of the work that I do is video, and in my case, it's digital video. The title of the show is Push Pull, um, which for me is an umbrella term referring to that in many of my pieces, there's an on and off state, or there's a tension between two forces. I'm really interested in uh, duplicating, um, replicating, deconstructing, reconstructing, uh, synchronizing bodies. I like when there's lots of bodies on a stage performing either a simple or intricate dance. And um, I, I, I want to make that happen digitally. So um, I'm interested in computer science, computation, and so I use, <clears throat> I use a, a game designer's toolkit to uh, make bodies move and animate bodies. Um, additionally, I'm really interested in how, how much time we spend in front of screens, um, how much we're exposed to uh, media and advertising, and how that affects the way that we think about ourselves, um, the way that we relate to others, how we feel, how, how we feel about others, um, and, and how those effects multiply um, across society. And, and then specifically themes in this show also surround um, consumerism, consumer culture, uh, and sort of the spectacle of, of materialism shopping in the United States. Black Friday is a dream sequence, I would call it, of my reaction to the landscape of consumerism in the United States. I find uh, shopping malls and strip malls uh, very strange and inspiring spaces. They're huge um, and bright and uh, colorful and in particular, the, it's not actually a holiday, but it could be called a holiday. The holiday of Black Friday um, is just this total spectacle that I find absolutely fascinating um, and horrifying. Uh, the fact that people have died in stampedes uh, trying to buy whatever 75% off television um, is totally nuts. Uh, and so I just had kind of this image in my head of this fantasy, um, a kind of pared down humorous fantasy depicting the, uh, the ceremony of Black Friday. I wanted to depict uh, Black Friday as, as a almost tribalistic ritual. Um, and I'm really interested in musical theater, and so I also kind of wanted to turn it into a bizarre, somewhat creepy, musical theater-esque uh, piece. One thing I think a lot about is the way that cell phones affect us and how we relate to each other um, through cell phones and how it makes us relate to our physical environments. Um, so I also think about unique ways we can use cell phones. We are all now walking around with computers strapped to us, which is a pretty amazing thing. And so Rise Dance um, is a performance where I ask everyone to take out their cell phone, sign into an application. Everyone gets a part of a song. It's a three-part harmony song and everyone who participates gets one note. And so when everyone comes together, I ask them to sing that note, and they've never heard the song before. All of a sudden, everyone's singing in three-part harmony. Uh, the reason it's called Rise Dance is because I ask people while singing in harmony uh, to writhe on the floor in a state of pain or pleasure, depending on how they want to interpret the word writhe. Um, and what happens is you get a totally bizarre, somewhat magical, um, probably uncomfortable for some people experience um, that, that I think can kind of produce, in its best form, I think it can pr produce a pretty emotional experience for participants. Um, 
And then specifically for this show, I think it, it physically actually resembles a lot of my video pieces. So to have a bunch of bodies moving together um, in, in, a, in a form of synchronicity, that was the image that I had in my head for the piece. Behind me is a series of videos I call body landscapes. And um, it's a very literal term because they are duplicates of my body uh, rendered in 3D over kind of a, a landscape or a spread, a texture. Um, and so I film my body and then either I use my whole body, the image of my whole body doing a kind of dance-like movement, dynamic movement, um, or in the case of the, the leg and arm pieces, I've um, taken footage of my arm and leg moving and then uh, put them back together and animated them. The arm and leg pieces, how they work is there is a system that takes footage of time-lapse clouds and then uh, triggers the movement of the limbs from that. So the color blue translates to a retracted arm or a lifted up leg, um, and then the color white translates to an extended arm uh, or an extended leg. The two center pieces um, are based on an algorithm called the Game of Life. And one thing that's really interesting to me is uh, the simulation of, of life dynamics, human dynamics, society, culture. Uh, Game of Life is one of the first algorithms of its kind invented in the 70s. And what it does is it really roughly uh, simulates population dynamics and how um, the ebb and flow of a population of, say, bacteria. And so I'm using this uh, simulation, this algorithm, uh, to create uh, an animation. And you don't have to know that that's the back end for the animation to appreciate it, because the movement that results from this algorithm is kind of like an electric storm or brain synapses lighting up or something catching fire. Lay down this one. It's an abstract interpretation of the classic Greek myth when Zeus descends to Earth in the form of a swan and then rapes or makes love, depending on how the story is told, beautiful Leda. She then goes on to lay a few eggs to give birth to a few uh, half-gods. There's one interpretation of the story in, done by a modernist painter, Cy Twombly, that I find really inspiring. He does a painting called Leda and the Swan. It's literally just a jumble of marks, and he fuses the roles of the story into one big tangle, so you don't see a separation between um, Swan and Leda, or Zeus and Leda. Uh, so with Leda and the Swan, I wanted to do the same thing, and fuse two characters um, into one form and then invite the viewer to come discover that they're actually two parts of a story. Uh, and the interactivity is the violence of the story. You have to flap your arms in front of the image of the swan, and when you do, uh, your, the feathers blow off and reveal Leda kind of inside or behind revealed from this one. I think uh, we've come, we're already getting very used to being, everything being interactive. Um, very practically speaking, all the tools we're using on our computers are interactive and dynamic. Um, I think to make art that is relevant in, in 2017 and beyond, if we're not thinking critically and creati creatively, uh, create creatively, about interaction while well, we're missing out. So I think it's really important that artists are uh, playing with interactivity and then also playing with um, a new rich visual culture of, of doing digital, uh, digital video.